Welcome, everyone. The Lord be with you. It's great to have you here this morning. Everyone here and everyone watching online, we're pleased to have you with us. And we also welcome, as always, the Holy Spirit, who is here as promised. Uh, this morning, we have a few announcements. Uh, first off, if you have a prayer request, please go ahead and fill out a card. It's in the back of your pew. Hold it up and our ushers will bring them forward so that we can recognize your prayers. Uh, and if you're a new person, please fill out a form and uh, a little card and drop it in the communion plate so that we can get in touch with you again. This week coming is Holy Week, and we have a number of things going on. First will be on Thursday, our Maundy Thursday worship service, um, and it will begin at 6.30. It is not live streamed, so uh, you would need to come into the sanctuary for that service. And if you've never been to Maundy Thursday or any of the other uh, weekday services that we sometimes hold, please come. It's a beautiful service, it's very moving, and it's something that you will find very enjoyable as we commemorate the Lord's Supper and the night that he was betrayed. Also this week on Saturday, we're having a work party uh, starting at 8 a.m. until noon. Uh, we need to clean up the joint. It's a red up place. We're gonna clean up stuff outside and inside. Whether you've signed up yet or not, just show up and lend a hand to make our church as beautiful as we can. And of course, Easter Sunday, we have a beautiful breakfast um, that our deacons take care of for us and we all bring some extra stuff. You probably got an email about it so that we can have a beautiful meal together before we celebrate the risen Savior. Right now, let us put our hearts and minds on our worship and listen to our call. Open for me the gates of righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stones the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. And today, if you are able, please rise and join us in praise to our Lord.
saves us. You are worthy of all our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. So, over the past month or so, um, a group of us have gathered as the growth committee because we know the wonderful word of God and we want to share the good news. And we want to share it with our community as we are North Hills Community Baptist Church. So in an effort to grow our community, Sue Clark and I will be in the back of the church after service with flyers and with postcards. And we not only invite you, we encourage you to think about the people in your life, the people who maybe have a church that they're not happy with, who maybe they know the word of God and it's been a while, or maybe you just want them to come to something fun. Easter Sunday is one of the best days around here for a multitude of reasons. But it is a wonderful day where we get to celebrate and fellowship with our community, and we get to enjoy breakfast together and prayer together, and then come up to celebrate the really great news together. So Sue and I will be handing these out, and we encourage you to take flyers if there's any businesses you know of that would allow you to put one in. And then postcards to give out to your friends, your family, your colleagues, anyone who you think would benefit from being here. We would encourage you to invite them on Easter. Thank you. Yes, 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 and what wonderful work that is to invite others into the joy of the Lord and to the strength of his presence and people. Well, there are many uh, joys and a few concerns here this morning I'd like to share with you. Uh, the first is from Jim Bentz. Where are you? Are you in the choir? This is what he says. This is what he, listen carefully. I have a great joy. Exactly 40 years ago today, <laughs> today, Miss Cynthia Ann Gwinnowitz, and where is she? Way back there. Walked down that very aisle in this church, and we said vows. And this is what he says. It's been a wild ride, and we are still full of joy. Now, I'm, I'm wondering, are there anyone, anyone here today who was there? Would you raise your hand if you were there 40 years ago today? Well, <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful, wonderful joy to share this morning. And uh, also from Jennifer Bond, uh, uh, an expression of joy and thanksgiving. She said, I'd like to express my thanks for the prayers and thoughts for my recovery. I pray for blessings for my wonderful church family. I think she's in West Penn. West Penn, yes. West Penn for rehab. And so we hope 
trust and pray that that will go well. She's in good spirits. She's very happy. Yes, she is. Hard to find her not in good spirits. Uh, yes. Now let's join uh, hearts uh, as we think about praying for one another. Uh, I've got a number of those. Oh, one more, uh, one more joy before we go to concerns. Uh, birthdays this week. Jennifer Bond. Renee Wallace, Heidi Clark, Dave, Dave Spence. So, happy birthday to all of those. And in terms of our prayers for one another, uh, praise God, prayers for Charles Warren are working. His stem cells are growing, and he is feeling stronger every day. Joy and thanksgiving for that. Continued prayers for... Ethel Rita Beck for healing, prayers for her husband Jim and for his arm. Please make that part of your prayer this day and beyond. That's Jennifer and that's Jim. All right, so then also let's remember um, some prayers today for Joanne Klaus' sister Barb who underwent brain surgery on Friday to address a difficulty she, she has had with tremors, praying for relief from her tremors and full recovery. I believe they're out of town today. Uh, prayers for Gary Klaus' cousin, Michelle Jones, who transitioned to long-term care facility as she deals with final stages of Alzheimer's. Prayers for all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and especially for Joyce Kaddish's sister, Julie McVaney, as she has experienced the passing of her husband, Mark, who died Friday, March 22nd. I hope that I have all of the prayer concerns that were listed here for this day. Please be in mind and heart to pray not only this day, but in the days ahead for those who need our prayers and who seek God's blessing and healing. And now let us join our hearts in prayer together. O God of strength and hope, God of our lives this and every day, on this holy day of palms and passions, and through this special week, when our Lenten journey finds its completion, through the pain and sorrow and despair and illness and loss of all kinds, through our fears and angers and all that we are and bring. We come to recognize all of the ways that you bless us and strengthen us. When our hopes are low, you lift us up. When our dreams fail to come, you give us new dreams visions. So fill us this day. We come with open hearts, open arms, open minds to receive the gifts that you wish to lavish upon us. We turn to you, we kneel before you, we open our spirits that we may let you give the fullness of your joy and love and healing and blessing and guidance and strength, all the things, these and more, which we need this day. So transform us. Strengthen us. Renew us. 
that we may be vibrant, vibrant in praise and, and service and in labors for your kingdom's life. Make us a new person. Make us gentle with others. Show us how to love the difficult and the unlovely. We pray for our world in all of its great need, lives hungry and lonely, destitute and frightened, famine, war, difficulties beyond our imagination. Give your strength and peace in those who are most wounded, and find life most difficult for all the children who are hungry this day. Give your blessing, strength, and guidance and turn the energies and minds of the leaders of the world to the building of life, the renewing of life around them and among them. We've listed names today that need your prayers, people that we know and some we don't, people that need your healing presence, people who seek your healing touch. In the silence now, we lift those that we love. Oh God, most of all, we thank you for Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior of the world and our lives. And in his example, we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
rock's gonna shout for me. Rocks keep silent. Ain't no rock gonna shout for me. Here comes the Lord, Hosanna's fill the air. The people bow and worship the promised King. Here comes the Lord, Hosanna in the hearts. If the people don't shout, the rocks will go. Buenos días. Good morning, everybody. Buenos días. Buenos días. Uh, los niños y las niñas, can you come up, please? This is the children, boys and girls. Oh, God, we got two niñas today, this morning, and we have another one. There you go, Rory. Thank you for coming. I'm um, just going to ask here my friend here, my brother Manny, to come up front. He's going to read a passage but he's going to read it in the language of heaven. So go ahead, Manny, and you can read it for the kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the language of heaven needs to be heard. So this is how it sounds. Bendito el que viene en nombre del Señor. Desde la casa del Señor los bendecimos. El Señor es Dios, Él nos ilumina. Comiencen la procesión con ramos hasta el altar. Tú eres mi Dios, yo te doy gracias. Dios mío, yo te glorifico. Den gracias al Señor porque es bueno, porque es eterno su amor. Amen. So, with that said, in English it says, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God. I will extol you. All give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. That is the translation in English, and he read it in God's language. Spanish. So, children, I have a question for you this morning. As you already know, what are we celebrating today? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. For those who are watching us online, we already we are celebrating Palm Sunday. So, what do we celebrate in Palm Sunday? What what happens in Palm Sunday? Okay, uh, we celebrate two things. As you know, Jesus came in a donkey. There is beautiful donkey. He's actually uh, smiling. He's quite happy. So for all of you, a donkey. And we also have a palm branch. Some of you had them today, this morning, as they were, you were processed, you know, parading and coming around in circles. So I want to ask you two questions for you all today. Okay. First of all, what does the palm branch represent? I mean, we see it and people are waving. What does it mean for y'all? Rory? It's symbolic Come a little closer, Rory, because my arm's not that long. I wish. Didn't Jesus, like, um, walk on the palm leaves? Like, didn't they, uh, the, like, um, the disciples or people, like, throw them down for Jesus to walk on? Yes, that is correct. That is in the narrative. That's what it says. But what does it mean when somebody has a palm? I mean, just waving around. Okay. 
Uh, not yet, not yet, but it is a celebration. Actually, the palm leaves means peace. So this actually means peace. Now, during Holy Week, we see that Jesus rode on a beautiful smiling donkey. He's cute. I know, it does look like Shrek donkey. And if you know the name of, sh of the do donkey in Spanish, is burro. That's actually what it means, burro. So you can roll your R's. So why did Jesus ride on a donkey? Why he di why didn't he ride on a horse? Because a, do um, a donkey is more peaceful. That is true. That is correct. It is. A donkey is more s like slow, and the horses go like fast and gallop. That is true. That's that's true. They're gentle. They don't go as fast. Anyone else? Why know the, uh, why Jesus rode on a donkey? Okay. Somebody taught this girl some Bible. There you go. You got it right there. You got the answer right there, Rory, because Jesus was a different type of king. He did not try to conquer people. You know how Jesus conquered the way that he did it? He did it by this. If you you all see me with this, right? You know what this what the, the name of this is this, right? It's a stole. It's a stole. We wear it, Pastor Tom, and I wear it because we're pastors. But also the stole means it represents how Jesus, you know, when he was with his disciples, he served them. He washed their feet. And this, pastors, is a symbol of service, that we serve one another. And the way that Jesus was king, he laid down his life for us. He did not conquer. He was a king of peace. He was a king that served one another, as you all serve. Um, how do you think Jesus, you know, what other things that he did that were different from other kings? We talked about he served, he healed. What else did he do? He also uh, was with people that were not well-liked that were not the greatest in the kingdom, of the kingdom of the world, but the kingdom of God, everybody, women and children are included, and those are the greatest ones, the ones that serve. That's why Jesus was a different kind of king. And today, as Pastor Tom will talk about Palm Sunday, let us remember that the way that Jesus serves as a king is not about hitting people in the head or bullying them or telling them bad things about them, but it's about washing feet, and it's also about peace, not about war, and the donkey. Thank you very much. We'll pray for all of you. Let us stand. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Prince of Peace, we thank you for all these children, God. We thank you, God, for the word that you have shown us, God, in your life, that you come to serve and one another god we bless these children and may they be a good influence to others and learn from your example we pray in the name of jesus our savior amen now you can go to children's church if you're up in the age muchas gracias Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for everything. And please accept these offerings that we return to you and bless them so that we may use them to spread your love throughout the world. Thank you. In your name, amen. amen.
Our scripture this morning is from Psalms 118, verses 25 through 29. Lord, save us, Lord. Grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks for the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The word of God for the people of God. And now from Mark's gospel, his account of Jesus' entry on Palm Sunday. As they, Jesus and his disciples, approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there said, ask, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus told them, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Let us pray. Oh God, may the message of Palm Sunday service and the grace and love of your heart. Bless us in the proclaiming and hearing of your word this day. Amen. I could tell you his name, but I'd rather tell you his nickname. His nickname was Gadfly of Copenhagen. He left us a treasure of writing that still thrills the human heart. But he also left a little simple parable that I dearly love, and it goes like this. There was a barnyard once full of geese. The walls of the barnyard were high, and so the, be the geese were secure, and the corn was good, and the geese were so happy. But one day there appeared a visitor among them, a philosopher goose. 
And the philosopher Goose said, do you seriously believe that this is all there is in the world? Beyond these walls, and there's a world, there, there are trees and valleys and rivers and plains and mountains and all these great things. There's a world beyond your barnyard. If you would just untuck your feathers. And someone said, profound. And someone said, tell us more. And the geese listened. They listened with all of their intention and all of their heart. They, they hung on every word that the philosopher goose had to say. They even started a magazine. <laughs> but one thing they never did. Fly. And the little parable ends by saying, because the corn was good and the barnyard was secure. On this Palm Sunday, we, we come to celebrate that we have been called to deep life. That there is in our lives, in your life, and in my life, something that's calling our name. Someone who's waiting and hoping for a blessing from us. Jesus, of course, could have stayed in the barnyard of Galilee. Just imagine what great success he could have had if he had just stayed in Galilee. Why, he could have started a mega church. And just imagine all of the people that could have been healed. And just imagine the, the Bible studies, the seminars, the people could have come and, and studied and learned the scriptures. If Jesus had just stayed in the barnyard of Galilee. But there was a different call. He heard his name. He heard his name sounded of a call of service of love of giving of sacrifice of course Jesus was tempted in another direction we know that after his baptism that Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and there had to struggle with that call what does it mean? And we know that there was a temptation there. There was a tempter there who said to him, change these stones into bread. Fill their bellies. Oh, they will follow you. They will, they will love you. They will do anything for you. Just fill their bellies. And then the tempter said, and if you just jump off the temple and let the angels grab you before you hit the ground, your ratings will go through the roof. Everyone will be astounded. Everyone will be, want to be a part of your movement. And if you just, just bow the knee to me just one time, Just imagine the razzle-dazzle. Just imagine the excitement and the glory and the wonder of it all. And of course, Jesus left 
the barnyard. He left the barnyard and he entered the city of Jerusalem eventually as Mark has unfolded the, sto the story for us. And there was Palm Sunday. But there wasn't much razzle-dazzle. Now, if you want razzle-dazzle, you, you can have razzle-dazzle because on the other side of the city of Jerusalem, there was someone else who was entering the city that day. His name was Pontius Pilate. You, you may have heard of him. He entered the city not alone but with thousands of troops. The banners, the Roman banners were flying in the air and the drums were pounding their beats and the armies were marching and the horses were beautiful and the cavalry and the glory and the power of Rome. Here it is. Just to let the folks of Jerusalem know, don't get any ideas at Passover. This is what you'll be facing. Pilate had come from his uh, razzle-dazzle city of Caesarea on the sea. Now, that's my kind of town, in case you're wondering. Caesarea by the sea. It was a fairly new Roman city. It had paved roads. The, art, the uh, engineers brought down water from the mountains and the aqueducts, fresh water for the city. They had freshwater swimming pools. They had a theater. They had a hippodrome where chariot races and Olympic games and all these kinds of things were going on all the time. They had a theater. They had Roman baths. I want to see a Roman bath. That's what I want. I want the razzle-dazzle. That's my kind of town, Caesarea on the sea. And so Pontius Pilate makes his journey, the 65-mile journey to Jerusalem, and it's razzle-dazzle, it's sound, it's glory, it's power, it's display, grandeur and might. And on the other side of town, Gosh, it's a pathetic thing compared to what's Pontius Pilate. There's this, there's this man on a donkey. God's going to save the world. God's going to conquer the world with a man on a donkey. And, and then there's these people. Most of them have walking on crutches, canes, some women, a bunch of kids running around. Their face is so dirty, they look like they haven't had a bath in six weeks. And they shout, Hosanna, which means save us. Well, to look at them, they need to be saved. They were the lost, the hopeless, the left out, the poor, God's going to save the world on this man with this man on a donkey. And then Jesus goes into the temple and nothing happens. It's over. All this donkey stuff, all of the branches, all these people shouting. He goes to the temple, he looks around, and the story's over. Nothing happens. Sets in motion this week, of course, this very special week that we are beginning today called Holy Week. Jesus gathers with his friends. They're mostly disappointments. You read the Gospel of Mark, you know what I mean. They were always saying the wrong thing, getting it wrong, asking for the wrong blessing. They were pretty much a disappointment. Give them an F minus. And on that Thursday night, Jesus prays over the bread and over the cup. And then he washes their feet. And then soon there's an arrest. And take, they take Jesus from them and they 
have a, a trial, and the, this old gospel song probably says it best. And he never said a mumbling word. And then on Friday, there he is, naked, stripped, exposed, having been beaten, crown of thorns, a few women with tear-soaked faces, the rest of the disappointing disciples, who knows where they have gone. And God's going to save the world with this. If we were telling the story of God's salvation, our human minds would never tell it this way. This would be so far from what we would imagine that God would do. We would imagine a God who's got power and strength and might. And God gives us the wounded one on a cross. During the early years of the church, first two or three centuries in the Roman world, there, was, there were three major plagues that devastated the population of the Mediterranean world. A third to a fourth of the people, uh, maybe I should reverse that, a fourth to the third of the people of the empire died. It was a terrible time. It was terrible. People threw their own children out into the streets. Families deserted each other. They refused to bury the dead. Most of the people who could fled the cities, got out into the country and away from all of that. And can you believe, for some reason, the Christians of that early Roman Empire decided to stay. They brought water, food, love, prayers, and caring to the dying. One of the church historians who was writing soon after one of those plagues said that those Christians who did all that and who died died serenely happy. Uh, can you believe that? Now that simply just that goes beyond what we can, with our minds, understand. It, it's almost like that, that must be a lie. Or, or maybe it's this. Maybe it's church talk. You know, we like to, to make it sound like it's more or better than it is. How do you explain that? Can it be true? And the only way I know to make sense of that kind of Palm Sunday faith is that they had already been into the waters of baptism. You see, they had already died. Before the plague, they had already died. And they had already been raised to newness of life. Life. 
that, that's what Palm Sunday is all about. Life, it, not life that's measured as to how many years is going to be in our life, but how much life. For Palm Sunday, faith calls us to live, to flourish. That it's not the number of days in our years or the years in our life, but it is how deeply and passionately we live our life every minute, every day with deep faith and fierce love. Palm Sunday faith calls us into a life that flourishes. That's what we're called to today. And don't think that you can do this on your own. I, I can't do that by myself, but I can do it because you're part of that with me. There's an African expression that says, I am because we are. I am a Christian because we are. And because when I can't make the next step, when I don't have that deep faith, when I don't have this fierce love, you do. And therefore, I do. That you're as connected to me and I'm as connected to you and that we're all connected to each other as a foot to a leg, as a hand to an arm. Palm Sunday Faith calls us to live. That there is a Jerusalem in front of us and maybe a cross and who knows what else, but together in the depth of God's love and grace and together in the Spirit, we don't care. It's in God's hands. And so, are you ready to leave the barnyard? Are you, rather, are you ready to untuck your wings? Are you ready to soar? Are you ready to live the way that God has called us and commissioned us and wants us to live? I hope so, because barnyards are for the birds. <laughs> Amen. Would you please stand for our closing hymn? <clears throat>
I did overlook one prayer request, and I'd like to add that before we leave. Continued prayers for Ethel Rita Beck for healing, prayers for her husband, Jim, and for his arm. Please remember that additional prayer concern. And may the joy of the Lord be with you. May the strength of the Holy Spirit guide you. May the power of God's love and grace give you strength and courage for the living of these days and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.